All right, guys, what's up? So I've got a lot of questions on uh, what's required to do the deletes on these L86 or L83 GM V8 engines. This is uh, basically out of your Silverado trucks, your Tahoe trucks, your GMCs. Um, most of these are going to have an engine similar to this one. Now, the L83 and the L86 are going to be basically the exact same engine, just with different displacement. Um, so this one here that I'm showing you is actually an L86, which is the 6.2 liter. Um, the L83 is going to be identical, virtually identical, same process. Um, but what's cool on these, I've noticed now, is that a couple of companies are making uh, AFM DOD delete kits for these now that do not require tuning. They use basically the OEM lift uh, and duration specs and everything for the cam. They just do not incorporate the AFM or the you know uh, displacement on demand features. Um, so it's really nice to be able to do that um, because it doesn't require tuning. You just basically turn the AFM or the DOD off in the tune. Now the other advantage is that you don't have to change out your valve springs on these as well. Um, all that's really required, you can use your stock push rods. You can use basically all your OEM parts. The only things you're really going to be swapping out is going to be your camshaft itself, your camshaft here, and your lifters. You're obviously going to be switching to an OEM style LS7 lifter like this one here. So it won't have any of the AFM DOD lifters. Again, it'll only have these style right here. So it's pretty cool. They have these kits available from Brian Tooley Racing or uh, Scrog and Dickey Products. Uh, they, they all offer some sort of DOD or AFM delete cam now. Um, this is the camshaft that came out of the engine. I've already got the new one in. Um, so you can see that kind of this is uh, what we're dealing with here. But the new camshaft is identical. Everything looks basically the same. So they say that it's not, it doesn't require any tuning on these engines. You can basically just do the cam swap and you can turn off AFM or DOD in the system and you should be good to go. Now, what's really required here, like I said, is you're gonna have to pull most of your front timing components. Um, this does incorporate VVT still. So your VVT gear here is still gonna be incorporated along with everything OEM, just like that goes. Now, I recommend replacing the timing chain tensioner is tensioner right here this assembly this can uh, get weak over time and end up breaking so this is a good part you want to replace um, you always have to replace head bolts of course when you do anything under the heads they're torqued to yield now I also like to replace this uh, wire harness right here which goes inside of your front cover it actually comes right through here and goes down and it plugs into your oil pump right here on the side now what it does is it controls this oil control valve which is located in your oil pump now a lot of times you'll have uh, wiring issues, this will get brittle over time on the end that's in the oil pan just due to heat cycles and things like that. So anytime I go in and do this type of work I like to replace these, uh, this harness right here just because you don't want to have to do that later. It's a pain to get to um, so we just go ahead and knock that out. Now a couple of other things you probably want to replace for sure, all the oil rings in your o -pan, uh, oil pan, I'm sorry. This here is your main uh, pickup tube o-ring. You always want to replace that one when you go in there. Um, this here is going to be our fuel lifter. So this fuel lifter rides on the fuel lobe of the cam, and this is what actuates your high pressure fuel pump. So that we typically replace as well, just because sometimes it can get some wear on the roller, so it's good to throw a new one in there when you're throwing in a new camshaft. Um, the oil pump here is also another part that's usually recommended to be replaced. Um, you don't have to replace it as part of the DOD delete kit, but it is good to always do so once you go inside just to have some peace of mind knowing that it's a new part in there. Um, some of the other recommended replacement parts are going to be the fuel rails that go up top. These things aren't absolute essentials to replace, but it is good to always replace these anytime you touch or disconnect these fuel rail components because they can leak. Um, and of course we've got our head gaskets, we've got new front cover seal, crankshaft seal that's going to go in our front cover over there. We've also got our head gaskets as well as our exhaust gaskets here ready to go. Uh, fuel rails are good. I took a look at all the injectors. It doesn't look like we're going to need to do any service on the seals of the injectors. I'm missing a couple of pieces here like uh, just this little rubber boot. So we're going to replace those, uh, make sure that those are all sealed up and good to go. We've got uh, new gaskets for our water pump as well, so that's good. New lifter trays, of course. You always want to have brand new lifter trays. Anytime you go in and replace the lifters on one of these engines, you definitely want to always replace your lifter trays. Um, this is a uh, easy to replace item. It's a wear item, and it's something that will cause your lifters to walk on the cam, and it can cause you a lot of problems, especially if you're going with aftermarket camshafts. So it's something you always want to take a look at. Um, we've got the rest of our stuff pretty much labeled and bagged up here, ready to go. 
Um, again, like I said before, the push rods can be reused. Um, you do always want to measure your push rod length just as you know a, a safety precaution just to make sure that you know you're not putting the wrong length push rod in there. Um, but we're going to keep that. Time and chain was good to go as well. You rarely need to mess with those and we're going to keep the stock rocker trunnion set, uh, set up on that as well. So that's pretty much all that's required. This service can be done with the engine in the vehicle. I like to do it with them out of the vehicle. It just makes it a lot easier to get to the oil pan um, because your front cover here, as well as your entire oil pan, are RTV sealed. Um, there's a special RTV sealant. It's a gray RTV sealant that they use on that. And getting it on and off with the vehicle in, or with the engine in the vehicle is a real pain because uh, you really have to clean and scrape all these gasket surfaces well. So I like doing it out of the vehicle. You don't have to do it out of the vehicle, but it definitely helps, makes it a little bit easier. Um, now, while I've got it out, I also check the engine mounts as well. Driver side engine mounts are almost always blown out, so we go ahead and replace those. Um, another thing that's part of the DOD Delete Kit is gonna be these little uh, guys right here. So these are little plugs that are gonna come with the kit. Let me show you. You'll get a set of them here, just like these. So with those, what that's doing is it's plugging off uh, your AFM towers. So these towers right here are where oil is fed into the lifter via what's known as the uh, valve lifter oil manifold, which is basically the whole plate that sits on top of the engine here. It feeds oil into these passages here, and that's how it locks and unlocks your AFM lifters. Now, since we're deleting all of that system, we're not gonna use that anymore. What we do is just plug those up with these plugs here that are uh, included with the kit. You'll literally just set them in and kind of tap and hammer them into place. And then you can put your VLOM or your valley plate right back over the top. These slip right into the gasket so it doesn't interfere at all. Um, you just lay that original plate right back on and it's good to go. So uh, that's kind of the basics here of what you're going to look at when you're doing a AFM or DOD delete on one of these LT engines. Any questions, just drop them below.